My mother-in-law's plot to claim my home after my husband passed. It was a cold, rainy Tuesday afternoon when my world shattered. The grey sky seemed to mirror the bleakness in my heart as I sat by Callum's hospital bed, holding his hand for what would be the last time. The beeping of the monitors had become a cruel countdown, each sound a reminder that we were running out of time. Callum, my husband, my best friend, my rock, slipped away quietly, leaving me alone in a world that suddenly felt unfamiliar and unkind. The funeral was a blur of black clothing, somber faces, and whispered condolences. I moved through the motions, numb and hollow. Among the attendees was Callum's mother, Veronica. Tall, impeccably dressed, and exuding an air of control, she offered her condolences with a cold detachment that contrasted sharply with the warmth of her words. As she hugged me, she whispered, We'll get through this together, but her tone carried a weight that felt more like a command than comfort. The days after Callum's funeral were agonizing. I wandered through our house, now too large and too empty, haunted by memories of our life together. Veronica's presence became a constant. She would arrive unannounced, her manner more businesslike than comforting. I'm here to help you, she said one morning, her voice slicing through the silence of the house. There's so much to take care of, and I want to make sure everything is handled properly. At first, I was grateful for her support. I was overwhelmed and barely functioning, so I let her take the reins. But as days turned into weeks, her help began to feel more like control. She reorganized the kitchen, moved furniture, and even suggested selling certain items that held deep sentimental value to me. One evening, I found her in Callum's study, sorting through his personal papers. What are you doing? I asked trying to keep my voice steady. These things need to be organized, she replied without looking up. We can't keep everything. It's time to start moving on. I felt a surge of anger and sorrow. These are Callum's things. You have no right to touch them without my permission. Veronica's expression hardened. I'm only trying to help you move forward. You're not thinking clearly right now. Her words stung, and I realized that Veronica wasn't just trying to help, she was trying to take control. I needed to find a way to reclaim my life and my space. Veronica's interference reached a new level when she began suggesting that I should move out of the house. This place is too big for you alone, she said one afternoon over tea. You should consider selling it and finding something more manageable. It's what Callum would have wanted. The idea of leaving our home, the place where we had built our lives together, was unbearable. I'm not selling the house, I said firmly. This is my home. Veronica's eyes narrowed. You're being irrational. You can't live here alone. It's too much for you to handle. I stood my ground, feeling a surge of defiance. I'm not leaving. This is my home and I'm staying. Her expression turned icy. We'll see about that, she said, her tone ominous. A few days later, I discovered a set of legal documents in Callan's desk. They were draft changes to his will, with provisions that would give Veronica significant control over our assets and property. The documents were unsigned, but the implications were clear. I confronted Veronica about the documents. Why are you trying to change Callum's will? I demanded, holding up the papers. Veronica's face went pale. I was just trying to ensure that everything was in order, she stammered. Callum wanted to make sure you were taken care of. I didn't believe her. These changes would have given you control over everything. Why would Callum do that? Her eyes narrowed. You don't understand. Callum trusted me to handle things. He knew I would make the right decisions. I felt a chill run down my spine. Veronica's manipulation went deeper than I had realized. I needed to find out the truth about her intentions. Determined to uncover the truth, I began investigating Veronica's past. I contacted old friends and acquaintances, digging into her history. What I found was a pattern of control and manipulation. Veronica had a history of inserting herself into her children's lives, often to the detriment of their relationships. I discovered that Callum's father had left under mysterious circumstances when Callum was a child. The official story was that he had abandoned the family, but whispers among old friends suggested that Veronica had driven him away with her controlling behavior. Armed with this knowledge, I decided to take legal action to protect my interests. I hired a lawyer and began the process of securing my rights to the property and assets Callum and I had shared. The legal battle with Veronica was grueling and emotionally draining. She fought fiercely, hiring a team of lawyers to contest my claims. The courtroom became a battleground, with each side presenting evidence and testimonies. 
Veronica's lawyer tried to paint me as unstable and incapable of managing the estate. They brought up my grief and emotional state, trying to use it against me, but I remained resolute, determined to protect what was rightfully mine. Throughout the trial, I found strength in the support of friends and family. They rallied around me, offering their love and encouragement. My lawyer was a steadfast ally, guiding me through the legal complexities. As the trial dragged on, a crucial piece of evidence came to light. I discovered a letter written by Callum, addressed to me but never delivered. In the letter, Callum expressed his concerns about Veronica's behavior and his fears that she would try to take control after his death. He urged me to be strong and to protect our life together. The letter was a turning point in the case. It provided clear evidence of Callum's intentions and his distrust of Veronica. The judge reviewed the letter and the other evidence, and it became clear that Veronica's claims were unfounded. Veronica's reaction to the letter was one of shock and desperation. Her facade of control crumbled, revealing the depth of her manipulation and deceit. After weeks of intense legal battles, the court finally rendered its verdict. The judge ruled in my favor, declaring that the draft changes to the will were invalid and affirming my rights to the property and assets. Veronica's attempts to seize control had been thwarted. The courtroom erupted with a mix of relief and tension as the judge's decision was announced. Veronica's reaction was one of defeat. Her attempts to control my life had been exposed and invalidated. With a legal battle behind me, I began the process of reclaiming my life. I took steps to distance myself from Veronica and her toxic influence. I focused on healing and rebuilding, finding solace in the support of loved ones. The house, once a symbol of Veronica's intrusion, became a place of renewal and resilience. I redecorated, creating spaces that reflected my personality and my memories with Callum. It was a process of reclaiming not just my home, but my identity. I also sought therapy to help me navigate my grief and the trauma of the legal battle. Through therapy, I found strength and clarity, learning to set boundaries and assert my independence. As I continued to rebuild my life, I stumbled upon a final mystery that provided closure to my journey. While cleaning out the attic, I found an old box of letters and photographs. Among them was a letter from Callum's father, written shortly before he left. In the letter, he described the difficulties he faced with Veronica's controlling behavior and his decision to leave to protect his own sanity. He expressed his love for Callum and his hope that one day, Callum would understand his decision. Reading the letter, I felt a deep sense of empathy for Callum's father. It provided a new perspective on Veronica's behavior and the cycle of control that had plagued their family. It was a reminder that my struggle was not just about my own life, but about breaking a pattern of manipulation. With the mysteries unraveled and the legal battles behind me, I embraced a new chapter in my life. I focused on honoring Callum's memory by living fully and authentically. I pursued my passions, reconnected with old friends, and opened my heart to new experiences. The journey had taught me invaluable lessons about strength, resilience, and the importance of self-advocacy. It had shown me that even in the face of overwhelming challenges, we have the power to reclaim our lives and shape our destinies. As I moved forward, I carried with me the love and memories of Callum, knowing that he would be proud of the person I had become. The story of our struggle became a testament to the enduring strength of the human spirit and the importance of fighting for justice and independence.